Hello and welcome to this chess video where we take a look at the London system. Now we already did a video with uh, an introduction where we go over what you can expect in this uh, in this video course or video series if you will. And the first uh, line we're going to look at is with d4 d5 when black plays e6 and we're going to look at uh, Bishop f5 moves, early bishop f5 and queen b6 ideas, which uh, generally attack the b2 square. Uh, we're going to look at them in another video. So this video will basically focus on this position that you have before you. And I, I think we can more or less consider this the main line uh, of the London, uh, even after, just after starting uh, the video series, I've, I've already gotten this position several times in my online games and i think you can expect to uh, to get this position once you start playing the london uh, let's first examine how we get this position there are sort of uh, two main ways to get it uh, we're looking at d4 and d5 and our move order uh, is bishop to f4 here on the second move when we go to uh, the video where we analyze queen b6 moves we will explain uh, better why we are saving this knight to f3 move. Now from here, uh, knight f6 is the most common move. Uh, c5 can also be played. Usually things transpose, so the move order is not hugely important, but what we will do here early in the game, if black plays knight f6 or knight c6, doesn't really matter, we play c3. And usually we get this position, and now we're going to play Knight d2. So first you set up a triangle. Black will play this. Lines where he plays this we will look at in another video. But for now we play knight d2 and black plays e6 and his aim is to play bishop to d6, challenge the bishop and get castled as soon as possible. We will also look at uh, bishop e7 ideas in another video. So here we'll play uh, knight g to f3. Note that we're saving this bishop, we're not moving it yet to d3 because in some cases we would like to move it to b5. Okay, and now bishop d6. This is what we've been looking at. Uh, deviations. We look at bishop e7 and deviations such as knight to h5 in another video. But this video will focus on bishop to d6 and bishop to g3. Sort of the main line here. Now, the main move for black here uh, is to castle. Uh, but before we go to that, we'll look at some uh, alternatives, and there are plenty of alternatives. Let's start with uh, queen to c7. The problem with this move is that the bishop is pinned now, and remember this idea, when the bishop is pinned, you can actually take on c5. Bishop can't take back because of the pin here. And black actually has some problems regaining the pawn. For instance, there was a game between Grishuk and Saturaman, an Indian grandmaster, who played a5, and Grishuk simply played c4 here. And you see that, well, if you take, then, well, taking is just a bad move. I'll, I'll take the knight and jump into d6. In the game, he played uh, knight to e5, but Grishuk simply took on d5. Saturaman captured on f3. And he took on c5. If he takes on d5, we will simply protect the pawn. So he tried to sacrifice a pawn here, but Grishuk has uh, good control here. He took on c5 and the monster knight on d4. And the white is a pawn up, so a great position. So just remember, if queen c5, black will have some problems because of the pin. You simply take on c5. So this is a rare line, but... Uh, but we have to look at it because it, it's logical for white, for black, sorry, to, to try to play e5. That's often the way to try to equalize. So queen c7 has some merit. Um, I've had this played against me, bishop takes g3. Usually we're quite happy uh, to take on g3. I mean, this is a very solid structure. We're quite fine with that. And quite often we have some chances with the rook on the h file. Uh, queen d6 is a logical move here. And just to demonstrate uh, first uh, some some uh, pros of having the, uh, the rook on the eighth file, if, if black castle, uh, I've had many games where I simply play bishop d3. And let's say, 
Okay, let's play a bad move for black here, bishop d7. Just to demonstrate, we can now play g4 because black can't take because of this. And we're threatening g5, and black is in trouble because if he plays h6, we play g5. And black is almost lost already. So just to give you an idea. Uh, queen d6 is probably a more logical move, trying to play e5. And if you can, and this is one of the reasons why we save the bishop, uh, when this happens we can play bishop to b5. We pin the knight and we're getting more control over e5, not allowing, uh, excuse me, not allowing black to play e5. And in doing that we sort of play against this bishop as well. So here we have some, uh, some high level games here, so after bishop d7, take on c6. Gaining control of e5, so the knight now jumps into e5. Queen c7. Uh, yeah, this was a game by Carlsen. Uh, the knight on e5 is actually quite strong. Another try is to play knight to uh, d7. Trying to dislodge the knight, but knight d to f3. And because of this presence of the rook here, the logical move f6 actually fails. And this happened in a game between two very strong players, both rated one uh, over 2400, the other over 2300, and knight g6. The pawn is pinned, rook must move, and rook takes h7. And white was already a pawn up. In Carlsen's game, uh, queen g7, he was playing against the Iranian board one, Guy Magami, and queen f3 here by Carlsen. And the idea is prophylactic, you don't want black to play knight d7 because you take on f7. And h6 now, and queen f4. The idea is to protect the knight, so you give yourself the option maybe of taking on c5 in some cases. So black protected the pawn on c5, and now g4, and cousin got a really nice position, especially because black has a hard time kicking uh, the knight, sorry, with f6 because of knight to g6. So a very nice position for white, and cousin went on to win against Guy Magami at the Back Olympia 2016. Just a quick look, Rook G8, this is what happened, we'll look at it quite fast. C4, King E7, and B4, some tactics. And Carlsen uh, won a piece. Rook takes F7, very nice finish. King takes Knight D6, and Magami uh, resigned here. So this was taken on g3 and bishop uh, and queen to d6, which doesn't seem like a, a very a very serious uh, attempt. Uh, queen e7 can't be played here, but it's it's very likely to transpose the queen e7 after uh, uh, our main move castling. We will play knight e5 also. If not castles, we will simply transpose with bishop to d3. Uh, other tries maybe bishop takes e5. D takes, knight d7. And here we can uh, play either bishop b5 uh, or f4. f4 is probably the better move. For instance, f6 and bishop to h4. Uh, it's, it's a very good position for white. I also like just taking on f6 and playing e4. Getting rid of this backward pawn. I mean, we won the pawn back and white seems to have a good position with uh, the bishop pair, the computers. Really like white here. And note that all these lines will be, uh, I will collect this in an ebook uh, where we'll have more detail. So uh, these will be available. Queen e7, uh, 95, yeah, okay. Also, uh, after bishop takes, uh, pawn takes, yeah, f4 is the best move probably, but bishop b5. It's an interesting move, uh, just to show you, you know, there are various ways you can play. And this was a game by mm, Kamski, he took on c6, and played c4. And this is sort of completely playing against the bishop on c8. This is the stuff you see sometimes in some Sicilian lines, where you play bishop b5 and you take on c6, and you play against this guy. And look at this. Just uh, fortifying the pawn, and... Look how the bishop just stays out of the game. Even even though we go for the trades, the bishop is, is very bad and 
this pawn is about to drop and Kamsky won a nice game. So this is queen e7, most likely it will uh, transpose. Uh, c takes d4. Uh, we're usually pretty happy with this. This, uh, you know, eliminates the pressure on the center. If black now, for instance, castles, bishop to d3 is a solid move. Queen c7, queen to e2. And we're quite happy to uh, to trade now on d6. Since we have good, after queen e2, we have good control over e5. We will play knight e5. Knight d7 and f4. And black has to be careful uh, because we have some some sneaky threats on h7. After f6, queen h5. Bishop takes h7 almost works, but uh, queen h5 is the better move here. And this forces black to play f5. And now uh, white took on d7. And this is from a game uh, by Andrei Zipenko. And this is like a, a very good position for white. And from here he simply ganked up on the e-file and eventually uh, broke through. The knight came over. Uh, you can prepare h3 and g4. This is like a dream, dream London position. And SCPNK won in only 38 moves. Knight h5 is another option. And Again, we can take on d6, play g3, castles, bishop d3, knight f6, and queen e2. And again, uh, going for knight to e5. We usually try to do this when we, we trade on d6 and have the square under control. And black is not able to, to break himself. Knight d7, f4, f6, and the same maneuver, queen h5, forcing this, and... White is doing quite well, very similar to the other game. B6 uh, seems a bit primitive here uh, before you have castled. We can, for instance, play bishop b5. And yeah, I think black is just in trouble here. You take on d6, you play knight e5, bishop d7, and f4, and you have a good position. The black pieces are somewhat. Uh, misplaced, uh, you'd like this bishop to be over here on b7 for more control of the e4 square. And usually when you have this stonewall formation and you have e4 under control, uh, you have good attacking chances. So from here you will just castle probably, and especially with black castles, I mean you, you, you have some, some very nice attacking ideas, you can pull the bishop back, and black is sort of left without counterplay. He needs to play something on the queen side, but it takes takes a lot of time. So I haven't had b6 played against me. So let's not go to the main move, which is to castle, and this will happen in the vast majority of your games, I presume. At least uh, so far, this is what has happened in my games. Now here we have uh, a choice. The old move is bishop d3, but bishop b5 has become... Um, kind of a more modern move. And I think this is the move I would recommend and play. But bishop d3 is still a move uh, that you can play. And it's good to have like, you know, options where you can vary and play, you know, one game you'll play bishop d3, the other you'll play bishop to b5. So first we're going to look at bishop to d3. Now from here, black has a choice. He can play uh, for e5, and he can do that with queen to e7, with rook to e8, uh, or even queen to c7. Queen c7, similar to uh, what we already looked at uh, move earlier, we can take on c5. Good idea to remember. If queen c7, we take on c5. Bishop takes d3. Uh, slight difference here that I can play e5, but e4. And yeah, black has to be careful uh, that we simply just don't hang on to the pawn. 97, this is a game Gorowitz against uh, uh, Aguero Jimenez. He takes d5, knight takes d5, knight d5. And white actually uh, managed to consolidate here, knight back to e4. c4 pushing uh, the knight. 
and after these moves a very nice uh, touch here by white knight to f6 I like you know adding uh, these games where uh, sort of demonstrate you know how quickly things can go wrong for black if uh, he doesn't know what he's doing king to h8 queen d2 threatening simply to take here with mate knight takes d3 doesn't matter we're still threatening mate on h7 g6 and queen e3 and this is just crushing and now a very a very nice move knight to h7 not allowing the king to escape to f6 if we had taken on on h6 then king takes uh, f6 but now black is just in deep, tr deep trouble if you take the knight we take on h6 the mate on h8 and if you play g5 we uh we simply take the material on offer and white has a winning position So this was uh, queen c7 again, just to remember this idea. And every time black goes e5 and you have these pieces, uh, you more or less, you, you go on e4 as well. So, And this nice attack here on, on h7. Okay, uh, that was queen to c7. Rook e8 uh, also has the idea of playing e5. So we occupy e5, we play knight to e5. Very logical play, not allowing e5. Uh, queen c7 now. Bishop takes e5 is also uh, a possible move here. Bishop takes e5. Here we take with a pawn, knight to d7. And knight to f3. And this has scored uh, pretty nicely for white. Uh, queen c7. And here we can castle. Note here that um, black isn't really threatening to take on e5 after castles. Let's say knight d takes e5. We take with a knight and then we play queen h5. A nice trick to know we have a pin here on this guy and the threat here. You can't even play f6 because the rook is hanging. So uh, a nice trick to know and we'll counter this trick a, a few more times, at least once. <laughs> uh, so maybe g6 is a move here. And from here you have some ideas. Uh, rookie one is one move, you can play bishop to b5, you know, putting some pin pins on, uh, on these pieces, securing the e-pawn and uh, maybe playing e4. So white is doing quite well here. C takes d4. I had this played against me, would be knight d7. Again, this, this is a very nice position for white, knight to f3. We got this pawn under control. And the bishop pair, and a very nice attacking idea in some lines here. B6 castles, knight to e4. And this was, uh, yeah, a game between Grasov and Demidov. Um, yeah, and this idea g4 to g5 is very, very often uh, something to keep in mind. In general, these structures where you take on e5 and you have this square under control are very, very uh, comfortable for white. And this game uh, was no exception. So a quick look, f6, queen f4, and here we have sort of uh, this typical uh, bad French where white has a good control over, over e5. So c takes d4 in general is not much to worry about, especially after black has committed to these e6 structures. Queen e7 can be played, but again we really like uh, f4 here. Knight d7, knight d to f3, and here's a very nice quick miniature game after f6, bishop to h4. Notice this, we planted this knight here, we brought the other knight to uh, support it. Now we bring this bishop, uh, you know, from its temporary cage here, pinning the pawn. Now we castle, and now we have a lot of pieces ready to attack, queen c7, knight g4. 
Queen e7. Now the other knight went to e5, utilizing the pin again. Bishop e7, and here uh, Pavel Blatny took an f6 and won a quick game after g takes f6, knight h6, check. King g7, queen to g4, and black is getting mated, king h6, and rook to f3. So. Yeah, whenever you get this set up with where you're able to play f4, you're able to castle, bring the other knight and play bishop h4, you're often doing, well, you're not often, most of the time you're doing quite quite significantly, significantly well. Um, queen c7, another game, uh, where white just, uh, where black played, uh, where white played f4, we have b6, bishop h4. Again, once you set up the stone wall, you're happy to uh, move this bishop and trade it off if needed. And this was uh, a quick demolition. This is a game by Gratchev, one of the uh, yeah world experts on the London. He was for a very long time uh, the number one rated uh, player on ICC, the Internet Chess Club in three minute and five minute chess and he almost exclusively used the uh, london system he was kind of one of the players that got me uh, interested in the london system but then later the london system became more you know and vogue became more popular and all of the top players started to play it especially like i said in the introduction in fast time control games magnus carlson and uh, and others so this game uh why this comp uh, completely winning here and Gratchev won a nice game. So bishop takes eight, seven shots. Uh, very often can be uh, thematic. See that black has no defenders, even though he has this going for him, uh, this uh, uh, fork here. He just has no defenders. And we have all these attackers, you know, in yellow. These guys are attacking this, and, and almost even the rook is, is ready to join. So devastating attack. This was uh, queen c7. Yeah, we're looking at, yeah, rook e8, okay. Uh, so we look at queen e7 here. And this move uh, contains a very attractive trap. Knight to e5, again, black was threatening to play e5, so we want to prevent that with knight to e5. And now a very logical move is knight to d7. Other moves, well, uh, queen c7 is the third most popular move, but having just played queen e7 doesn't make a lot of sense. Bishop takes e5 has been played. And as often happens, after d takes e5, we play f4. We bring the knight, and we're doing quite well. Black can take on e5, but we're quite happy with that. We'll take with a pawn. We have the bishop pair. We can castle. Bishop h4 ideas. Even some threats here, so black has to be really, really careful. So bishop takes e5. Doesn't happen much. So knight d7 is by far the most popular move. And now uh, we don't play f4, but we play knight takes d7. And if uh, your opponent has never faced this, he will most likely take with uh, the bishop, which is a very logical move, but it's most likely a mistake because now we will take on d6, queen takes d6, and d takes e5. Now the best move is queen c7, but again, it's, it's difficult to figure that out. So most people will play here, queen takes c5, Then you will unleash a fury up on black with bishop takes h7. And this has occur, occurred a number of times. This is from a famous game. The most famous game probably is Kamski against Shankland. Uh, there was also a funny video. I think it was Bartholomew who played against uh, Nicholas Huzenbeth. At least Huzenbeth had black and he was like, is this, this some, some sort of a trap? I think it was against uh, John Bartholomew. And now the idea of this check is knight to e4. So we're utilizing the pin here. 
So the knight can't be taken. Queen c4, knight g5. Threatening mate. And the uh, key idea is that g6, which would otherwise save black, doesn't. After knight takes e5, g takes h5, knight takes d7. So very important that the knight is hanging at the end of this. And white will be uh, up at least a pawn. Well, probably more because then the rook is hanging. And then we take, I'm going to put it on d8. Then we play knight f6 and we win a pawn on h5. So we're up two pawns. So because of this, uh, black has to allow knight, knight to g5, which simply threatens queen to h7. Queen d3 doesn't do anything because we will simply interpose with pawn to e4. So we have to uh, make a square for a king. But then uh, we take on f7 and kill check on h5. So we eliminated the pawn here. And note that we can always give a perpetual check if we want, but you should not do that because this is a winning position for white. And rook d1 is the idea that uh, Kemsky played. And he's foreseeing that eventually the king will have to run to d6. And that's indeed what happened in the game after e5. Uh, there was a check here and e4. 97. Uh, Shanklin decided to give back the piece, but there was much else to do. Queen takes e7, bishop to b5, e5. Rook d2, there was a mate threat. Queen takes a2, and now the queen comes back. And queen h5. And now we're ready to uh, check on h7. This typical maneuver, queen h8, and queen takes g7. King has to go to the d file, and now the rook on d1 uh, is ready to deliver, deliver the death blow. And Shanklin resigned here. After queen f6. So this yeah, very attractive trap means that uh, after going all the way back after knight takes d7. Let's actually uh, go forward with bishop takes d7 because after takes takes and takes on c5, queen c7 is the best move. But from here we'll just castle. And it's very important that after knight e5 we again have this... Uh, trick with taking on h7 so if black takes here you will again take on h7 and the other position we had there was a queen here and the bishop here pinning the knight but here we just we're winning a pawn okay black isn't like completely lost he can play like f6 and e5 and has some central control but we're up a pawn and that should count for more in the end so yeah, after knight takes d7, the best move turns out to be queen takes d7. And after uh, bishop takes d6, queen takes d6. Uh, if we now go for the same line, take on c5, and all of this, black can play g6. And this move actually forces a draw, uh, because we can't take on c5. So we have to play queen g5. And this is a draw. But okay, um, we're not going to do that. And after uh, queen takes d7, we're going to take on c5. Bishop takes c5 and play knight to f3. Bishop to d6 and e4. We can also, instead of knight f3, and uh, Again, I like to emphasize that, you know, it's it's not always important to know uh, the exact moves. It's more important to know the kind of ideas you want to go for. So you could also castle here. And I'll quickly go over a game here just to show you one idea that often happens uh, in these lines. White goes for, you know, just castles, is solid, and, and goes for e4. Black takes on g3, usually we don't mind that. And these kind of positions, although they might seem a little dry, and probably they are, white always has a very logical idea, and that is to play for the end game match with the three against two here. And in this game, uh, uh, Engwin, I don't know how to pro pronounce <laughs> Engwin, uh, Wen Trongson from, from Vietnam, I actually played them once when he was like 11. He just followed the simple plan here of... Uh, eventually 
expanding on the queen side. And yeah, just, we'll just quickly go over this game. And eventually he won a pawn here and he has an extra pawn and an outside pass pawn. He managed to realize his uh, three to two advantage and this was enough to win the game. So this was castles. To go back, this is the line with queen takes d7. We're looking at d takes c5. Bishop takes c5. We just looked at castles. Knight f3, and this game had a very similar situation e4. Black taken on g3. Bishop takes e4, h6. Queen a4. And the trade here. And in this game, white got his rooks active here. And this rook on the seventh was enough to win with a three against two uh, majority. Eventually, white pushed and black was in trouble. So this is just you know to give you an idea that uh, if they know what to do here, uh, you know at least you know what to aim for if you go for this end game. If you take on c five, if you want to draw, you could take on. Uh, d6 but i'm guessing you want to play for a win probably i don't know so okay this was queen e7 and this very famous trap and there's also b6 here now um here these days a lot of people are playing queen e2 here after bishop b7 uh, just centralizing with rook d1 um, that's an option. I'll probably add some games to my to my ebook about this, but I prefer uh, e4 here, which seems to be uh, what people are playing these days, uh, including Magnus Carlsen. Here, Black has a choice: either to take on e4 or to play bishop to e7. First, we're going to look at d takes e4. Here, we will take with a knight on e4. Black is more or less because of the attack here, forced to take, uh, take on e4, bishop takes, attack here, so black plays bishop to b7, and now we take on, on c5, and notice the double attack here, so black is uh, more or less forced to take on c5, if you take on g3, h takes, and the attack on h7 means you don't have time to take on c5, and f5 you just have a very very bad structure, the Bishop can reroute and attack this weak pawn, and white is much better. So let's have a look at this line a, a little bit again. So uh, b6, e4, takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, attacking the knight, now we take on c5, bishop takes c5, and queen to a4. And this is another trap that has caught many victims, and... Our hero, Gratchev, he has won two games like this, uh, where black goes rook to c8, we play rook d1. Now, the best move is to play queen e7, but it's very scary because it seems like b4 is winning the bishop. However, black has uh, some, uh, some counterplay. If you play b4, you can play f5, and it's a very complicated position because black can take on b4, and things are actually not so clear, like takes, takes, king f1, bishop takes f3, something like that, and it's actually not so clear according to the computers, so most likely we'll just uh, castle here and centralize like rook f2, e1. b4 is maybe an option as well here, uh, but here we have a very solid position, nothing to worry about. But queen e8 has been played a number of times, seemingly because you know b4 looks so scary that you want this square for your bishop. But here, uh, the computer will simply say it's made in a few moves. Bishop takes h7. And actually, in Gratchev against Gorodetsky in Minsk 2015, after king takes queen h4, black resigned. Uh, if you go back, then well, you're just getting made it. This congestion is not helping and you have no way to stop this and other ways you can more or less work out and it's just winning for white um 
It was also a recent game with knight to a5 here. And there, rook d1 was played as well. And the best move is probably, oh, oops, queen to c8, which wasn't played. And from here, white is better after both bishop d3 or bishop takes uh, b7. But in the game, queen to f6 was played, and now bishop to e5. Uh, the queen doesn't have a lot of squares, goes to h6, and now we take on b7. Play b4, and queen d7, and black is simply losing a piece. This is what happened in the game uh, Elizabeth Pats against Karina Szepowska Horowska from Poland. So yeah, this is a very attractive line with, with queen to a4 here, a very forcing line. So black has to be really careful in, in this line. Another option is to play bishop to e7. And this is actually what is considered best. But here, uh, okay, white can grab some space, play e5. Uh, knight d7 is a move, but knight to h5 is much more popular and more logical. Black wants to go for this bishop. And here knight g5 might be possible, but I like the move a3 here. And this has been played uh, a few times, g6 now, and queen e2. And the idea here is to attack on uh, the king set. Let me just give you an example. Uh, black goes a5 here, queen to e3. Bishop to a6, takes, takes. Castles, a4. Rook f to e1. The idea here is to give a square to the knight. Queen to d3. And notice this knight transfer knight to f1. Then the knight goes to e3. And eventually, okay, we have to move the queen, the knight goes to g4. And we're ready to jump into f6, and if black takes, we take on uh, f6, and the knight can jump to e5. So a nice square for the knight, and this helps us attack. And Elizabeth Pats won a nice game here in St. Petersburg in the World Rapid and Blitz. Black eventually took on g3, and the knight moved in. Okay, black could have played better, but just to demonstrate the ideas, very important maneuver of the knight to g4. So this is how I would play against, uh, yeah, knight h5, g6, queen e2. Play this a3 move. And go from there. So this was uh, e5. Yeah, I think we looked at what we want to look at there. So bishop d3, definitely uh, a viable move. But now we come to uh, bishop to b5, which is the more modern move instead of bishop to d3. Now the idea here is, of course, to uh, combat uh, for the e5 square, not to allow black to play e5. And let's have a look at the options. Now the main idea here is that if black just plays a move like a6 and allows us to take uh, we have another trap here queen to a4 and i've already had this in a game on the internet after uh, starting to look at this and make this serious bishop to b7 we take on d i even had one game where white uh, where black played bishop d7 and this hangs resigns but bishop b7 then we take on d6 and now you see the idea, queen to a3. A very bad pin here, and the knight can come to b3 as well, and we're going to win this pawn. And white stands very well. Rook b8, this was the game, Carlsen against Anand. Uh, queen a3 was also played there. Threatening to take and play knight b3, win the pawn. Anand took on g3, took on d4, but now white has excellent control over the... Uh, dark squares. Notice this knight can jump into e5, the other one to c5, and we're trying to play a little bit against this bad bishop. So let's see what happened. Carlsen won a very quick game. He castled b3, just, you know, fortifying the pawn. Rook f to c1, queen to 
queen to d6 and black is having a problem with the pawn on c6 yeah and Carlson won pretty quickly here took on b7 and played rook c7 and an under side. So things can very quickly go wrong, even for very strong players here, after uh, bishop takes c6 and queen to a4. So keep that in mind. Uh, bishop takes d3, ace takes d3, uh, queen to d6, with the idea to play e5, then we take on c6. We don't allow e5. Actually, knight b3 is a move here, and, and queen a4 as well. Maybe just queen a4 is a move here. Aiming to play for a similar idea to play queen a3. Uh, queen b6 is also a move. And here we can take on c6 or play a4. Um, a4 was played by uh, the king, Magnus Carlsen against Caruana. Let's have a quick look at how that game progressed. Queen b3, queen c7, a5. Bishop to d7, bishop back to e2. And notice how this, this structure is very solid. And often when we have this, we're quite happy to play on the queen side as Carlsen did in this game. Queen a3, uh, forcing c4 when we have this nice pawn break, uh, b3. And yeah, black can take this pawn. Uh, he's gonna get into trouble with the queen. So white has time to play c4 and eventually the queen side play by Carlsen prevailed here and he won a nice game this was in Paris uh, probably a blitz game in 2017 but most of the time uh, the moves you'll meet are bishop e7 or knight e7 these are uh, sort of the and vogue moves knight e7 is the most common move but now we play bishop d3. Uh, I had knight f5 played against me, and I think I, well, I, re I reacted like the uh, engine suggested, took on f5, d6, and c5. And as often happens, some nice black square play. We have a tremendous knight on d4, and we love playing against this guy. I mean, it's uh, blocked by its own pawns. I castled in the game, I played g3, Knight d4, and a very comfortable and solid position for white. C takes d4, we don't worry about. Uh, there was a game like this with bishop to e5. And again, whenever we take here and can get the d4 square for a knight, we're very happy. Now, as, as a bonus, we also took an f5, and white has an overwhelming position here. Queen a4, so there's no time to take here. White is doing excellently. But after bishop d3, uh, the main move is b6. And now uh, the move that we're going to play is e4, exclamation mark. And this has been played by Magnus Carlsen on two occasions. And this is very, very dangerous indeed for black. Bishop takes d3 was played by Anton Korobov against Carlsen. He took on g3. Uh, trade on e4. Note that we're threatening to play e5. And take on h7. So a trade here. And he played knight to g6. Trying to fortify h7. But here knight e5 would have been really strong. This is what Carlsen should have played. But he didn't. He played d takes c5. But knight e5 is uh, a huge advantage for white. Let's see why. Let's see some examples like a normal move like bishop to b7. Now we take on f6 and we simply win uh, an exchange. Okay, what about a move like knight takes e5? Then we take on f6 and I'm afraid h7 is hanging now. And this means we have the standard trick that you must know uh, the winning move for white now. You have to know this pattern. Rook to h8, enabling the Queen to come in with check and then checkmate. So after knight e5, black is actually in huge trouble.
another game, so D takes E4, and this was Carlson against Posiosic. Knight takes E4, Bishop takes E4, hitting the rook. And now probably the best move is Knight to D5, but White is doing quite well here. After Bishop takes C5, we can castle. Uh, C4 is in the air, so probably castles and black has some, some problems to deal with. But white is better, uh, according to humans and computers. In the game, uh, Bosiosic played rook b8, but this is matched with d takes e5. A very nice move. Uh, you, we also saw this in the line with bishop d3, b6, e4. Again, this double attack, and black is not doing well here. Takes on g3. We can take on g3 or d8. Let's have a look at both. First, if we take on d8. Looks like we're allowing a tactic here with bishop takes f2, but we take with the king and then c6 and black has a very hard time dealing with the simple threat of pawn to c7. We can also take on g3 and if black takes on d1, rook takes d1, f5, bishop to d3. Uh, this is a very cozy line for white. In the game, uh, Bosiosic played f5, which is actually probably just losing. And after queen takes d8, uh, rook takes d8, c6. A very nice move by the world champion. c7 is incoming. And let's have a quick look at this game. Rook takes d5, rook d1. Rook takes, king takes. Black tried to activate with bishop to a6, but look at this knight. This is just game over. Black can't do anything. And Magnus won a quick game against uh, a very strong uh, Blitz and Rabbit player, Bosiocic from Croatia. So this was, yeah, if we go back. This was 97 bishop d3 b6 when uh, we have this very strong idea. Other moves oh yeah c4 maybe a move bishop c2 b5 and here we're quite happy to play for e4 and we have uh, a nice position whenever black releases the tension with c4 usually we go for e4 and we're quite happy so okay this was knight to e7 the other move is bishop to e7 and i kind of struggled a little bit with this move um most people have been playing bishop to d3 here and you can still play it. it it's solid there's uh, i mean i don't think white can be worse in any line but i think myself i would play queen e2 here but first let's have a look at bishop to d3 uh, black has some yeah good choices here b6 or knight to h5 if b6 uh, we will uh, castle knight d5 is also an option it's always an option if you can do it knight e5 and f4 you have a solid position, but okay, black can also take on e5, and we're starting to get some pieces off, but white is very slightly better here. Castles, bishop b7, this was uh, Carlsen against Wang Hao, and Carlsen played h3, which is the computer's choice, bishop d6, also the computer's choice, and bishop to h4. And from here, queen b1 was played by Carlsen, uh, but the computer likes uh, rook to e1 here and gives a slight edge to white, like 0 0.4 or 0 0.5. So if you want to play like Carlsen, you can play like this. Um, black can also play instead of b6, knight to h5. And here I struggled a little bit more to find something. Uh, knight e5 looks like the move, but only if black goes for knight takes g3. This actually happened in a Gratsev game uh, against Koryatskina. He took on h7 and king h8 because if you take on h7 there's h takes g3. Nonetheless we have the same trick as we had before. Rook h8 and queen to h5 incoming with mate on h7. So this can happen. So you don't always have to be worried about like the absolute uh, main lines because more often than not your opponent will not play it and it's better to know like these typical moves 95 f4 
and and be aware of the options that you have but g6 is a better move here and after knight d2 f3 mm, probably around equal uh, this middle game I wasn't able to really find any impressive there are not not that many games I wasn't uh, able to find any you know impressive ideas so I, I've kind of settled on Queen e2 here so even though the, the bishop is is more natural here you know black has spent time on bishop e6 and bishop e7 so Queen e2 uh, not many games here there was one game uh, Tamir Nabadi against Movsesian where Movsesian played Queen to b6 and We'll just follow this game because nobody is usually well prepared and he was playing the computer moves he took on c5 bishop takes and rook b1 here probably not the best move by Mosesian. he played knight to e7 but nonetheless it's not too easy to to recommend the move for black and note that it's it's uh black doesn't have a really you know he'd like to play e5 but it takes a long time to prepare if rook e8 you walk into a pin white will castle and eventually break probably with e4 and he has a very nice and comfortable position in the game Movsesian played knight to e7 bishop pulled back to d3 bishop d6 and here uh, bishop h4 was played but white should probably castle or play e4 here and he has a very nice position Computer didn't like bishop h4, but thinks that white is much better after castles or e4. So there was queen b6. I also looked at uh, lines with knight h5, because if black knows about this knight h5 line when he played bishop d3, he might play it uh, after queen e2. A quick look first at a6. I think here we can just pull back to d3. And now if we go for the other line, uh, with knight to h5 we gain the tempo I mean a6 doesn't do much so we essentially gain the tempo with queen e2 and that line should be uh, slightly better for us because of that so knight h5 and here uh, I think bishop takes c6 is interesting uh, this is the computer choice b takes uh, looks like a forcing line because knight e5 hitting the knight and well you said a you have to say b so probably take on g3 h takes g3 and turns out this rook like in one of the first lines we looked at in the video is quite useful for instance queen b6 now, there are many pitfalls of black here like queen b6 you want to attack this but now you're in deep trouble queen h5 h6 knight g4 and black can actually resign here believe it or not you can check this with your own computer or the ebook when it's ready bishop d6 is the main choice here and here are quite like castles and again a lot of pitfalls f6 queen h5 h6 if you take on e5 we take on h7 and black is in big trouble here uh, once again queen h5 king has to go back to uh, g8 and we bring the pieces in slowly but surely and i wouldn't want to be uh, in these shoes yeah so this is h6 and now we can play knight g4 actually queen e8 and take on h6 so a nice attacking idea to know here and black is actually we are not doing too well after d takes e5 the bishop is in trouble and for instance if we go to c7 we can just regain the material rook h7 but such a variations uh you should check with your computer but we wrap a bunch of pawns here we regain the piece and we just up a million pawns basically so i think this line uh is quite interesting with uh long castles yeah, new line, so it needs to be tested, but um, looks quite promising for white. So yeah, I think about uh, just about covered everything I wanted to look at in uh, in this system here with bishop to g3. Uh, 
So once again, uh, next video will also be about D4, D5, but we will look at something else, either Bishop E7 or some of the other lines that we've yet to look at. And yeah, uh, I will eventually make all of this available in an ebook. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, I would really appreciate support if you could uh, share the video if you like it, uh, you know, leave a like, leave some comments. If you have some specific questions, uh, I'll try to answer them as as much as I can. Um, hope I didn't make any mistakes in the video, but they always creep in. So we'll just find them together. And if there's something you'd like to have a look at that we didn't maybe look at uh, well enough uh, in these lines, you know, we'll, we'll have a look at it and maybe I'll, I'll even make an extra unlisted video that we'll just uh, just link to from this one. But yeah, this was uh, the London uh, d4d5 with e6 without bishop f5 or early queen b6. So yeah, it's getting a bit late here, so uh, perhaps uh, my lighting is a bit dark, but hey, we're looking at chess here, and this was the London system. I'll see you uh, in another video, guys. Bye-bye.